Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today is going to be a dribbling session. Just to let you know, today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is available on my website, 7 and And from websites to analytics to marketing tools, they're the all-in-one place to grow your online presence and manage your business. But today's dribbling session is actually going to be a session I used to do all the time, especially in my youth career, on my individual training days. I'd probably do this exact session about three times per week. And at the time I found it really beneficial, I found myself getting a lot more confident on the ball and a lot sharper with my dribbling. So today's goal is just to get hundreds to thousands of touches at speed, changing directions, getting touches with all the different surface areas of both feet, just so we improve our confidence and control. So we're gonna get warmed up a little bit more, gonna go through some fast feet exercises, just to make sure I'm switched on, ready to go, and then we'll get into the full session. So this is all the equipment I'll be using for today's session. I've got a football, of course, 10 cones, I've got an activation band, and then also a speed ladder. I've listed all of my equipment in the description box down below. But an activation band is just a thick rubber band that you can use to activate those hard to warm up areas such as the hip flexors, groins, glutes, and hamstrings, which are all really important areas of the body to switch on, not only to reduce the risk of injury, because if they're not switched on, another part of the body is just gonna overcompensate, and that's how you can get those overuse injuries, but you can actually increase your performance by activating these areas. They're all involved in high intense movements, so if they're switched on, you're gonna move more efficiently and get more out of your training sessions. So there's a few exercises I'll typically go through with the activation band. And then the speed ladder is just to switch on those fast twitch muscle fibers and get some coordination going. So I'll just go through a few exercises followed by a about 10 to 15 meter sprint or so. So really firing up the body so that I can move more efficiently for the main bulk of my training session. So I usually just go through forwards, lateral, and then I'll do an icky shuffle. And then I'll finish with a bit of a freestyle where I'm kind of improvising, just working on a few different actions, crossing my feet over, just to increase my coordination with my footwork. So if you don't have a speed ladder, you can just use cones. I'll put a link on the screen right now to plenty of exercises that you can do using just cones to get the same benefits from these fast footwork exercises. Then after going through five different rounds, I feel pretty switched on and ready to get on the ball. So I always start with a bit of a technical warm up, which involves dynamic ball mastery. So the goal of dynamic ball mastery is just to get some touches with all the different surface areas of both feet. So you feel in tune with the ball, coordinated, and also it can improve your control at the same time. So as you can see here, just using the inside and outside of my right and left foot independently, and then I'm using them together to move the ball from one side of my body to the other. So light touches, staying light on the balls of my feet, moving agile, and then going back and forth. Now I'm involving the sole of my feet as well. So I go out with the right foot, return with the left, then I include the inside and sole for the final exercise. So all of these are really gonna help you improve your control, almost like a technical warm up, so you can go into the rest of the session feeling a, a lot more confident on the ball. Then I went into my first exercise. I absolutely love this one because you get work on and off the ball, which is the main theme of the entire session today. So I've got five cones in total, four around the outside to form a square. It's about four or five steps between the cones on the outside. Then we've got one directly in the middle. So you accelerate to the middle of the square with the ball, leave it in the middle, accelerate without the ball around the opposite two cones, and you go back to the middle to retrieve the ball and then dribble back to the starting point. So I go two in one direction and then two in the opposite direction so that I'm getting a balance on both sides when I'm changing direction. Then after four rounds, I'll rest for about two to three minutes, making sure my heart rate is lowered before going into the next exercise. So this is the setup for the next one. This is called the Pato Drill. So again, we're working a bit off the ball and then we're getting on the ball and working on our dribbling. So starting at this gate here, it's an acceleration up to retrieve the ball keeping the ball under control, so take a touch of the ball with every step, manipulate the ball through the cones in the middle, round that bottom cone, accelerate to the top, and then we end at the square at the top. So this is an overview of the drill, so you can see it for yourself. So we accelerate up, get on the ball, move sharply through the cones, accelerate around, and then up to the top. So very short and sharp drill, so you wanna go through this at maximum intensity to get the maximum benefits out of this exercise. And I go through this four times in total. 
I rest for about 20 seconds or so between each repetition. Basically enough time for me to collect the ball, put it back to the starting point and walk back to the starting gate. And then I'll go into the next repetition. So a good combination of acceleration off the ball, tight control around the cones, and then it's an acceleration with the ball up to the final gate. Then I go into a basic cone weave. So this is a really beneficial exercise. The most simple one out of all the exercises you'll see in today's session, but I find this to be so effective. If you can slightly move the ball from one side of the body to the other at speed, it's a great way to unbalance defenders. And then we always need some end product. So after we've gone through the cones, push the ball out of our feet and accelerate onto it and then finish into the goal. It's about three steps between each of the cones and I've got them diagonally facing towards the edge of the 18 yard box where the D meets the 18 and then I'm cutting the ball at an angle to shoot the ball across goal. So for this one, I just went through four repetitions. So again, we're not going for quantity. It's all about quality going at high intensity going as explosive as possible, resting for about 20 seconds between each repetition, basically enough time to retrieve the ball and get back to the starting point. Then my final drill is the Ronaldo speed test. So as you can see, we start on the six yard box here. We've got a gate at the top of the D. So we turn and accelerate without the ball up and retrieve the ball at the top of the D. Then we dribble with the ball out to one side of the 18 yard box, all the way across to the edge of the 18 yard box where the D meets the line and it's back up to the top, and we accelerate back to the middle around the penalty spot, and then it's just a simple finish into the back of the net. I'd recommend going for finesse using the inside of your foot. It's really important to stay composed when you're tired, and especially with this drill, a lot of activity off the ball and on the ball is gonna put some fatigue in the legs, so it's really important to control that finish when you're feeling tired. And then for this drill, I just went through four repetitions. It's quite a high intensity one, a little bit longer than the other ones. The other drills are about 10 seconds total. For this exercise, you're trying to get under 20 seconds with each repetition. So a little bit longer, which will put a little bit more on the legs. But as you can see, plenty of work off the ball, plenty of work on the ball, and we're including a finish at the end of it. And that will conclude for today's session. So if you go through this session efficiently, you should be completing it in about 30 to 40 minutes. With the rest periods included, it's very short and sharp, but this is really gonna increase your confidence on the ball, help you change direction quicker, and accelerate with and without the ball at your feet. So there we go, guys. That's it for today's session. Completed it in about 30 to 40 minutes. So it's all about high intensity when you're working today, but we're not going for a long duration. It's about being explosive and sharp on the ball. As I mentioned at the beginning, that's a session I would do multiple times per week, especially in my youth. And even today, it's still a fantastic session. It really covers all the bases. For me, high quality dribbling is all about being able to change speeds and direction with the ball efficiently at top speed while keeping the ball under control. It's not always about showboating and skills, even though I absolutely love that as well. It's so exciting. But for me, dribbling is all about high quality control at speed and manipulating the ball, changing direction sharply. So that session really covers those bases, on and off the ball accelerations, sharp turns, and we even had a bit of finishing there at the end because it's always important to have end product after the dribble. So I hope you enjoyed that session. Try it out for yourself. Just before I go, I wanna say another huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is where I put my website, 7mlctraining.com. It's become the central hub of my entire brand and allows me to put everything 7MLC training related in one place. And if you enjoyed today's exercises and you want a full structured program to take your dribbling to the next level, I'd really recommend checking out Magnetico, my very own seven day close control dribbling training program. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. But if you've ever considered building a website, you don't know where to start, check out Squarespace. And if you use the link in my description, www.squarespace.com slash 7MLC, you can get 10% off your first website. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash the like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly training videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.